Hi guys, today let's take a look at, well, looking at really small things, microscopy. So, welcome to GCSE Required Practical Number 1, Using a Microscope. Okay, before we start, you need to know about the microscope. You need to know a few basic rules about it. Number one, if you're carrying this piece of equipment around, you carry it by the arm and by the base. I've only taken my hands off to show you where those areas are, but otherwise you carry it like this so you don't drop it. Number two, when you're looking down a microscope, make sure you're careful around who's around you, because if you get knocked from behind, you're gonna take your eye out whilst looking down the microscope. So be very careful. Number three, we need to know the parts of the microscope. So here we have it. This is the eyepiece. Uh, it's the bit that you look down, so you put your eye to it. It's the eyepiece, it's quite intuitive. This has actually got a magnification in it. This alone has got a lens that makes things 10 times larger. Um, I know this because it says 10 times on it, or 10x. However, your microscope might say something different, so just beware. But that's got 10 times the magnification. And you look down this and it sends your sight line down these lenses here. As you can see, they rotate. We've got three of them. And these are called the objective lenses. The smallest one has the lowest magnification. The medium one has a medium magnification. And the longest one has the highest magnification. Sometimes microscopes have four of these. This one's only got three. This one tells me that the lowest magnification is times four, so anything you see through this is four times bigger than real life. This one is times 10, and the strongest magnification is times 40. If you combine that with the magnification of the eyepiece, then we get some very simple maths, 10 times four. So it's 40 times bigger when you look through this one combined with the eyepiece. Um, if you combine it with this one, which is times 10, times 10, that's 100. 10 times 10 is 100. So if you use the medium lens on this one, um, then the object will appear 100 times bigger than it really is. And then this, the highest magnification is times 40, and this is times 10. So you've got it, it's times 400 if you combine those two. Next thing to look at is the stage here. The stage um, is the place where you put the slide, the thing that you want to look at. And it's got these two clips which can secure a slide down once it's in position. In order to focus the microscope, you need to be able to move the stage up and down. And so it's got these two adjusting focusing knobs here. And one's big and one's small on purpose. The big one is the gross adjusting knob. And you can see as I turn it, it allows the stage to go up and down or closer and further away from the uh, objective lens. And this is the fine um, adjusting knob. And as you can see, I can turn it a lot and you can barely perceive the stage moving for very fine, careful movements when you're at high magnification. And down here, we've got the lamp. Um, I've got a cable as well. If I plug this in, then we should be able to see that the lamp turns on. This sends light up and through the specimen, through the slide, through the thing that you want to see. So clearly this is a microscope to use mainly for very thin specimens that you can shine light through. You have to be careful because these lamps get hot. Some older microscopes might not have a lamp, they might have a mirror so that you can redirect light from outside onto the mirror and up through the slide, but more modern ones do have a lamp. And then we've got the base. In order to look at something under a microscope, you need to put the specimen or the thing that you want to look at on the stage, and then you need to turn around to the lowest magnification or the smallest lens. Then you need to focus it whilst looking through the microscope. And when it's brought into focus, and only then can you turn to the middlemost magnification and focus it again and then turn to the highest magnification where there is the smallest amount of distance between the objective lens and the stage. You don't want to start on the highest magnification. 
if you did start on the highest magnification and you tried to focus it, you could drive your uh, objective lens through the specimen, smash a slide, break the microscope. Okay, for this required practical, you need to look at two types of cells. You need to look at animal cells and you need to look at plant cells. And in order to do so, you need to get a source of cells and then you need to stain them. Because we're staining them, your hands and your clothes could get very messy. So you must always make sure that you are very careful with stains. Hence my lab coat. So, let's take a look at animal cells first. So I need a source of animal cells. And where's the nearest source of animal cells? Right here. So, I'm going to get some animal cells. The easiest cells to get are your cheek cells. They come off very easily. So a little bit of a gross alert, but I'm going to get some cheek cells. Here we go. And I'm going in deep. Give it a good rub around. Get as many cells as you can. Right, on that cotton bud now are a load of my cells. So I'm going to take a slide, and you'll note that I'm holding the slide by the edges, that's so I don't get my fingerprints all over it, because if I did, I'd just be looking at fingerprints and not at the animal cells that I wanted to look at. So I'm going to take the animal cells, and I'm going to give that a good old wipe on the centre of the slide. And then I'm going to dispose of this cotton bud into some disinfectant so that we don't pass any infection onto anybody and so that everything's nice and clean. So that goes into there. Now those cells are on the middle of this slide. So the next thing I need to do is, if I take a clean surface and place that onto a clean surface so that I don't contaminate the slide or make it dirty in any way, the next thing I need is the right stain. And the stain for this is methylene blue. And so I take some stain and I only need one to two drops of it and I'll drop it onto the slide where I put my animal cells or my own cheek cells that is in the middle. Now I need another thinner um, piece of slide uh, which is called a cover slip and once again taking great care not to put my fingerprints all over it handling it by the edges I take the cover slip and I place it onto the slide at 45 degrees and then I let uh, the cover slip drop and it will spread the stain out. We can see that that's spread the stain out nicely. Uh, if you need to, you can get some blotting paper and just dab up any extra stain from the edge. And then it's time to pop it onto your uh, microscope and uh, search around at the lowest magnification for some cells. And the cells will look a little something like this. Okay, at times 100, you can see the pointer that's installed within the microscope uh, and below that black, little black line, um, you can see um, one of the cells. Uh, above it, there's another one as well. And if we go up to times 400 magnification, we should be able to see, if we look out for the pointer, that cell that was below it, nice and clearly. And we can see the blue cytoplasm. We can see the dark blue nucleus in the middle, like the yolk of the egg. And then we can see the line around the outside, which is the cell membrane. And that's probably about all at uh, this magnification using these microscopes that are available to us at school. That doesn't mean that the other organelles aren't there, it just means that the magnifications that we have available to us aren't able to pick up ribosomes and mitochondria for instance. So now we need to get rid of this and we'll pop it into our disinfectant as well. And now what we need to do is we need to look at plant cells. And so the best source of plant cells for this is an onion. You may know that an onion is layered. Well, with each layer, there's a very thin layer of cells in between each that are easy to peel and take off, and I'll show you how to get them. And in true Blue Peter style, here's a piece of onion that I've cut up already. And so we can see that an onion is layered. Let me take one of those layers. Okay, we can see the layers come apart quite easily, and we've got the outside of the layer which is shiny and the inside of the layer which isn't so shiny and you'll see that we're able to take just a, a very thin layer of cells from the inside layer and as you can see there's a very fine layer of cells peeling off and so we've got this fine layer of cells from the inside of the layers of uh, an onion and we want to put this 
also on a slide. So once again, I very carefully lift the slide and I can place this onto the slide with the help of a mounted needle. Now, we need to try and get it as flat as possible because if it's raised up from the slide, it's going to uh, be difficult to focus on. And we want to make sure that it, it, it wants to roll up, but we want it to be flat so that we can stain it and see the cells. Okay, so I've popped that on there. Now we need the right stain. And the stain we use for this is iodine. And we take our prepared slide and put a drop of iodine onto it and let it soak onto the onion tissue. Then we need our cover slip again. And at a 45 degree angle, place it onto it and it will push the stain across and push any bubbles away as well. Now that one's ready to look at under the microscope and it looks like this. And so this is what the plant cells look like under the lowest magnification. And if we change it up to the middle times 100, you can make out the cell walls and the double lines of the cell membrane. I'll just focus it a little bit. And if we look at times 400, you can really see the cell wall, the cell membrane, and if we change the light slightly you might be able to make out some of the organelles. And we can see a nucleus in one of the cells to the right hand side of the image. You might be able to make out a vacuole uh, but again, you won't be able to see ribosomes, you won't be able to see chloroplasts, you won't be able to see mitochondria at this level of magnification. And so that's it for looking through a microscope and required practical one, except for your magnification calculations, which we'll look at in more detail later. Why not check out more of our videos or even our Cyber 60s for a shorter 60 second version? And if you found this Cyber Teachers video informative and helpful, why not click like and subscribe and we'll keep the Cyber Teachers content coming.